it's Anneli again. This time, I'm speaking from a planetarium in Berlin. I will be speaking to Günther Hasinger, an X-ray astronomer who has discovered many black holes. Hi, Günther. Hi, Anneli. So, <laughs> should we go? go? Yeah. So, how do you use X-rays in astronomy? X-rays are just another kind of light, similar to optical light that we can see with our mm -hmm. eyes and radio waves. And uh, hot stuff is emitting X-rays, so, so we can see very hot uh, material in the universe that radiates in X-rays. Okay, so you're not using X-rays like doctors use X-rays to look inside things? Yeah, also X-rays are very penetrable. They, they can uh, go through things, so we can look through uh, the bones of the universe in okay. a sense. All but right. we are mainly looking at uh, the emission from X-ray. Uh, when you look at the sky, we are, instead of seeing stars, seeing black holes. So, so we oh. know from our deep X-ray surveys that there are only order of 400 million of these um, active black holes mm -hmm. in the whole uh, sky. And so uh, that's the difference. When you look with an optical telescope, you see the stars shining. When you look in the X-rays, you see black holes. And so this is a real black hole finding machine. Um, but I thought the stars like our sun were very hot. Are black holes even hotter than the sun? Oh yeah, heat is relative. So <laughs> the, sun, <laughs> the sun is 5,000 degrees, uh, which is already quite hot. But when yeah. you go into the center of the sun, it's about 10 million degrees, uh, and there are places in, on the surfaces of things that are so hot that they shine X-rays and we can really peer through them. But how do you know those things are black holes? Yeah, black holes is um, one of the sorts that are shining most efficiently in X-rays. We cannot see the black holes inside, but we can always see how the black hole acts on its environment. For okay. instance, matter that swirls around a black hole is heating up so um, hot that Quasi its last cry of help is emitted in X-rays and then we can see it. And then where does the gas come from that, that is? So for instance, we know black holes um, in our own galactic center uh, and uh, elsewhere, which are swallowing gas. Uh, in our own galactic center, we see the object that is eating masses of gas uh, roughly the size of a, st of, of a mountain or so. <laughs> Uh, every day a snack is taken and the matter is swirling into the black hole and uh, is shining up very brightly. We have even seen black holes in other galaxies that um, are eating whole stars. Okay. <laughs> and then it, uh, the snack is taking uh, a year or, or longer and then the bright light is coming. And then the most massive and most active black holes, they eat about one to ten stars every year. Wow. <laughs> and so they are <laughs> continuously swallowing stars yeah. and they are happily shining very far away, we can see them. Yeah, Reinhard Genzel told me about that, the massive black hole, but um, not all of them are that big, right? Right, there are different kinds of black holes. Uh, we know the so-called stellar mass black holes. Okay. They are thought to be created at the end of the life of a big star, massive star. In, in the end, the star is colliding and it's forming a black hole. Mm -hmm. This has about the size of a big city on, on, <laughs> on Earth. Wow. And then okay. we know the supermassive kind. Th this is about three million in our own galaxy, galactic center, up to three billion solar masses. And that has about the size of our own planetary system. But just recently we have discovered um, a so-called intermediate mass black hole uh -huh. in the globular cluster Omega Sen. This is actually one of the beautiful globular clusters. Uh, but it is in reality the re remnant of a small galaxy which has been swallowed by our own galaxy and is still running around. <laughs> and it has an intermediate mass black hole of about 40,000 solar masses. And now uh, I think we have on the order of 100 stellar mass black holes in our galaxy. And now we have the one supermassive and at least one intermediate mass right. black hole. If they're getting bigger because they're, they're eating swallowing. the other ones. Yes. Won't that go on? And then won't the whole galaxy be oh, yes. by a black yes, hole? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> if you wait long enough, but this is really aeons, so that means uh, 10 to the 100 years or so, then everything will be somehow swallowed by a black hole uh, in the end. But this takes very, very long time. So um, indeed, the black holes have the tendency to eat and eat and eat, right. but uh, our own star, um, the sun, and the planets are safe for the moment okay. uh, and also for the next hundreds of billions of years. Okay, good. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. How do you find black holes in other galaxies though? Okay, so you can find them in the same way as Reinhard Genzel finds them right. by looking at the stars or the in gas infrared. in the infrared yeah, right. and the optical. But you can also find them in the X-rays because um, when a star is swallowed then it, they are shining up very brightly. And the, the so-called quasars, the, the very um, massive and very distant black holes which are eating happily, 
they are brilliantly shining and you can see them onto uh, the rest of the, the end of the universe. Basically. And how do you know the things you're looking at are in fact black holes? This is, this is the most difficult yeah. part <laughs> because we can never look inside the black hole. Uh, right. Theory of relativity is forbidding that. I think a very good way would be gravitational waves uh, that um, you can see from the very vicinity right. of the black hole. But in the X-rays there is also a very nice uh, possibility. We can see iron atoms which are swirling around the black hole with this almost the speed of light. And similar to how the police is measuring the, 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 the speed of a car, mm -hmm. we can actually measure the speed of these um, uh, uh, iron atoms. Oh, right, okay. And we can see that they are swirling around with uh, 100,000 kilometers per second. So this must be real relativity right. like Einstein has predicted. But I, right. actually one very interesting point would be if two black holes are merging, right. then they basically shake um, yeah. the time, they warp the space time. Right. But simultaneously or very close by you, we expect also a big outburst of um, uh, light. Right. Uh, right. And so it would be really very good to have gravitational waves uh, and uh, x-rays together that that would be a very good um, yeah. diagnostic power for, the, for when, the future. But when the black holes collide, don't, when you expect gravitational waves to come out of it? Yes, yes, indeed. So, so it's clear that the gravitational waves will, that, will be the yeah. distinct signature. Right. But also, usually they bring some stuff with them. I mean, this is actually a very important question right now. When the two are merging, will there be light or will there not be light? Okay. <laughs> but um, I th I, for me, I believe that in the future, when the gravitational wave detectors are going, like LISA, for instance, mm. it's also would be very important to have X-ray detectors simultaneously right, yeah. uh, to, to really get the whole picture. What do these black holes mean for us on Earth, though? Do they have any... Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, we, I mean, originally black holes were just a figment of imagination right. and theory and so on. But now we have found them. We really know we can point to them. Right. But now I think it's even more um, uh, interesting that we now believe that the black holes have an intimate relation to our existence in a sense. There, there are black holes in the center of every galaxy. Mm -hmm. We believe that they are the first objects or uh, close to the first objects that are formed in the galaxy. And now we have even some evidence that they are influencing their galaxy. They can, for instance, tell a galaxy whether it is allowed to form stars or not form stars. So somehow we still don't understand why they are intimately related to our sheer existence. Okay. So how, how did you get into this whole astronomy and x-rays? <laughs> I originally was a rock musician when Me I too. was still... You too, yeah. wow. <laughs> and so at some time we had to decide whether we want to do something real or whether we continue with music. And I think this is always a very hard decision. I decided to study physics uh. just for fun. And then I came into astronomy later. I had mm. very good teachers, and okay. in particular X-ray astronomy, I had a, a good teacher, okay. so here I am. Why did you decide against being a, a musician? Yeah. I think I'm a worse musician than <laughs> an astronomer. <laughs>